This is part two of modeling a toaster for beginners in Blender. And I want to remind you that I'm using version 2.79, not 2.8. If you are using 2.8, uh, you can still do this, but the interface is uh, somewhat different and a lot of the shortcut keys are different. You can still download 2.79. And personally, I would recommend that uh, all of my videos were done in 2.79 or earlier. Um, although I will be switching to 2.8 uh, soon. This is uh, our progress so far, and it's based off of uh, this image. Now, there is another uh, video tutorial where I made this, uh, but this one is for uh, relative beginners. The final result may look slightly different from this as well, by the way. So this is what we've done so far. We started out by bringing in a circle to get this curve and we deleted the bottom half and we flattened the circle a bit and extended it down using extrude flattened that out then we gave it a little bit of width and then we created this curve by extruding off of the faces here out a little bit and then we added edge loops or loop cuts to sharpen these edges whether or not I pressed smooth on this I don't know I don't think I did so Okay, so here's where we're at, and it's looking just fine so far. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to place to put the toast in. So let's come back to Blender, and I'm just holding the middle mouse button to scroll around, or holding the shift and middle mouse button to move like this. I'm going to press 7, and that's going to bring us to top view, so we're looking straight down. You can also get there by going here. See, it's number 7 on the numpad. I'm going to go into edit mode. I've got my subdivision surface modifier turned on. I can turn it off with the eye or turn it on. It doesn't really make much difference. I haven't applied it yet. I don't think I will apply it at all. It's just there. So I want a hole in here. And so what you need to do is you need to look at the geometry, these faces, and say, well, where can I make a hole? Um, I could select, I'm in face selection, all of these sort of in the middle, let's say symmetrically, like however much, you know, I could take that and I could say, okay, I'm gonna delete those X, don't do this. <laughs> and that would make a hole, but that's for an awfully big piece of toast. So we're not gonna do that. So instead what we're gonna do is we're going to create a smaller region there. I'm going to shift alt and click that edge loop right there and I'm going to bevel it. I'm going to press Control B and pull. And as I do that, I get a space, large or small, depending on how you move your mouse. So think about how big your toast is. Okay, I'm going to click right there to accept. A to deselect. I now have an edge loop here and here, and I have geometry in the middle. If I switch over to face selection, Okay, and I hold shift, I can select all these faces like that. And imagine I made that a whole X faces. All right, that's looking really good. I could put a piece of toast in there. But because this has subdivision surface, this modifier that pulls the geometry and tries to round it, I need to do one more thing to get this to be a nice hole. It looks fine now, but let's just back up a bit. With that stuff selected, I'm going to create another squared or a rectangle region inside this one using the inset tool. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to press I and I can pull my mouse in or out. I just want a small little border around it. This is like a reinforcing wall so that when I delete these faces, which I'm about to do right now, X faces. And I go back in object mode. You won't really see anything different, but I've created a little bit of support for when I do my next manipulation, uh, which will be to extrude this stuff downwards. Um, and you'll see how that benefits, I hope. So I'm going to go into edge selection and shift alt and click that innermost line. Okay, there was the outer line we inset to here. I'm going to extrude downwards, E, left click, pull down with the Z arrow. 
down a ways into the toaster. We're just gonna leave that open like that. Now I'm gonna deselect, let's come back out. Looks okay, but it needs to be a bit sharper. So in edit mode, we're gonna add an edge loop. We're gonna add an edge loop and bring it up close to this one. By insetting the way I did with I, what I've done is I've got an edge loop here, but I've also got one on the outside. I'm just holding shift to select different parts. So it's like I've got a wall here and I've got another wall there and I'm gonna go control R. I get a pink line, click and drag up. Keep dragging until you see it. See the way it's sharpening up? Maybe an equal distance or relatively equal distance from here to here and from here to here. Let's have a look at that. Now that's not bad from a distance. Up close it starts to look a little bit faceted like that. I think what I want is a more square opening anyhow. And so what I'm gonna do is go into edit mode. And what I need to do in order to make this curve a little more square, I wanna push it against the side. I'm gonna put an edge loop here, watch this. Control R, click, drag, and see the way the white is getting pushed in? I'm gonna go about an equal distance. Sort of this space here is about the same width as this. I'm gonna do another one here. Control R, click, I'm gonna pull over to there. Now let's see what that's done. Okay, now it's looking nice and crisp. I'm gonna do the same thing on this end. Control R, pull, it doesn't have to be perfect. And another one, Control R, pull. Now I have a nice big hole. Now maybe that's a little bit too big. Maybe when we selected, we didn't want to select all of those faces, but I think we'll leave it for demonstration purposes. This could also be used to make some kind of a little thing where you put a coin in like a laundromat or something. All right, or a bank machine, would you put coins in that? I don't know. All right, we're gonna do a similar thing at the front not exactly the same. We're gonna create another hole for the, you know, the switch that you use to turn the toaster on. So let's go into edit mode and let's think about this for a second, okay. I want to create, so by the way, let's just notice that here it's a bit rounded. And by the way, it is a little bit faceted here. So I just made this more square in this, in this model. I thought I, I like that effect a little bit better. The squareness with the roundness, it looks kind of nice. Okay, front view, edit. I'm gonna create this. So I need a hole, right, into the actual uh, geometry. So where do I want it? Well, let's go into face selection so I, I can select. That's far too big, uh, but I can make that region smaller using the inset tool. Watch this, select that face, hit I, and pull in. How wide do I want this hole? Maybe, maybe that wide, but that's too long. And so I can go S, Z, scale it in the Z, and then it pulls all this stuff quite a bit. Maybe what I could do is back out of that a little bit and put in some edge loops to define the region I want that. So what if I go Control R, click, pull to maybe there, Control R, click, pull to maybe, maybe there. All right, so now if I go into face selection, I'm just going Control Tab. I have that region. It's a lot smaller than that. If I hit I now, I can pull in. And I go, okay, I want it about that high, but I don't want it that wide. Let's scale it in the X. Let's make it narrower. S, X. I can pull in like that. That looks about right for what I want to do. All right, let's just try it. Let's delete that face. And we get a hole. Our mesh looks okay, but it's really pointy. So let's drag an edge loop up. Control R. Actually, before we do that, let's extend this into the toaster. All right, in edge selection, let's shift alt and click the edge and let's go E to extrude and pull it in a ways. 
Okay, just like that. Let's look at that. All right, we got a weird hole. It's not very defined, so let's add edge loops to define it. Back into edit mode. Let's first of all, pull an edge loop up to the top and to the bottom, and that will help define the region. Control R, click, pull up near the top. Control R, click, pull near the bottom. Now, how's that looking? Somewhat better, a little bit more square. Let's do more. Let's put an edge loop. Let's turn that off so you can see a little bit better. Okay. Let's put an edge loop here. Control R and pull towards the front. And put that back on. And we get this effect. Now we have some pulling here, but we can fix that, I believe, by putting another edge loop here and pulling in towards the middle. And we get this. And that's not bad. We now have our little hole. So that was a lot of edge loops. Just follow what I did and you know, over time you'll get a sense of where you want to put them. You experiment. You take them out if you don't like them. Okay. Well, we need to make the, the switch here. So, uh, what shape are we going to use? So you can't really see the inside. It was pretty rectangular. Maybe a cube would work. Just scale it down and extrude it and stuff like that. I want the switch to show up right here, right at the front. I don't want to build it back in the middle of the of my object. My 3D cursor is still down there, and that actually determines where a new 3D object will come in. So, for example, if I bring in a cube, Shift A mesh cube it show that and I'll scale it in it actually shows up right at the 3d cursor which is not the end of the world you can always pull it out all right uh, but another good technique to use is to select your model go into edit mode and choose an area that you want your new object to come in close to so if I shift alt and click that edge if I then go shift s cursor to selected that will bring the 3d cursor right to what is selected there now i can deselect go into object mode and my 3d cursor is now at the front there so if i go shift a mesh cube and scale i'll just scale in object mode it shows up very much closer to where i want it all right so that's what i'm exactly going to do shift a mesh cube i'm going to go into edit mode though to scale it and I'll scale it just narrower than the opening. Now that we have this, the approximate width, we can pull it out a bit. In face selection, click that face. And I can now pull it out a little bit. Not too far. All right. And then I'm gonna create this region here. So I'm gonna hit E to extrude and left click and S to scale. You can see what's happening. Click, keep it selected, look around and say, okay, I think I need it a little wider in the X. S, X, pull it out like that. And that looks okay. So let's give it some more depth. E, left click, pull it out in the Y direction until you like the size of it. I'm going to deselect and let's look in object mode and I have that. It's very sharp so we're going to do some work on it. Let's pull the whole thing out and look at this and let's go back into object mode. Let's click this face and just make it a little bit longer but then let's delete it because it's on the inside and we really don't need it do that. Now I'm going to add subdivision surface in object mode. I've got a subdivision surface on it. Bring it up to two. Come in and to make it a little bit more square, I'm going to add an edge loop, control R and pull up. And another one and pull down. 
see the shape it's starting to get. Let's put one on the left side here. Pull it over. Not quite to the end. And another one here. Again, not quite to the end. We're almost there. Let's put them here towards the front towards the back and maybe one more right here just to tighten that up we're not going to see in behind there so it really doesn't matter let's deselect go into object mode and press smooth and then pull it back into position maybe pull it up a little bit and now we have that 